he started it. He started it in one of his prey books. There, he had a black cop named Franklin who was wearing a t-shirt that said Logan's septic systems satisfaction guaranteed or double your shit back. You just, <laughs> this, right? Something like that. Something like that. And then, so I wanted to play into this and so I wrote this scenario where I had a, a guy in jail named Waldo Camp who was very odd and who'd been caught because he had carnal relations with the dog of one of his victims and they found the dog's picture in his wallet and he talked like Andy Devine because he had stabbed himself in the throat with a fork because that's he heard how Andy Devine got, Devine got his, his voice. But see, I made them, since John helped me get in the writing racket, I made the mistake of letting him read the manuscript. And he said, you know, this is funny. And he even said, I used to have a chicken named Waldo. But, you know, it, it's too strong. It sounds like you're sort of like, you know, come on, Chuck, I've helped you out. And, and then he lobbied my wife. I didn't say that he, I didn't, my argument that Chuck has never understood <laughs> is that there's a technical problem. And the technical problem is, is that if you refer to a guy who's wearing a shirt that says uh, uh, Logan Septic Service, you know, satisfaction guaranteed or double your shit back, it's just a passing thing. But if you set up a whole little scene in which the whole purpose of the thing is to have a guy who, who you know, Waldo Camp, and you go into it, who doesn't have any other function in the book, then you've got a technical problem. And, and Chuck thought that I was lobbying, you know, to get rid of it. I was lobbying to get rid of it purely for aesthetic reasons. <laughs> so I, I defer to his judgment, and I change the name, and he chuckles, and in his next book he has an extended chapter in which there's this unctuous, disgusting worm of an undertaker named Undertaker Logan that goes on and on and on, and, and I don't know how that fits in with the argument he just made, you know. <laughs> well, what can I tell you? <laughs> yeah. was, in other words, he it was artistically necessary for that particular book to have yeah. an undertaking. In other words, he, he he finessed me out of doing. It. He came back and he hammered me, and so then it went back on a, a mild. You had one guy reading the Ruby. What was the? You had some a couple uh, of Logan. Logan was reading the Rubiette of Omar Khayyam, one of the most despicable books ever written. <laughs> but uh, and then I also had the Logan who ran the. Uh, he was the. Uh, ran the butcher shop, he was a meat cutter and uh, was reading uh, poetry books and read poetry to, uh, to Lucas in the butcher shop up in, uh, when they went in to get a sandwich. But the thing is, is that, is that um, uh, nothing was you know, really too harsh. Until uh, the last round. Until the last round. <laughs> Several years ago, we were, you know, we go hunting up at his place in Hayward and he had a manuscript you know, and our redneck hunting partners were there as well, you know. And so he had to read this passage. And his book started in a mental hospital where there was a mental patient named Logan who had overinflated his penile implant. And the result was that his package now looked like a cauliflower. And he was just regaling these guys with this stuff. And I said, Camp, I said, your book comes out before my book. Oh, it's so funny. And so I went and sat in my deer stand, and then when my book came after his book, I had a scenario called Camp's Last Stand, where a local guy named Camp had obviously been uh, playing with himself when the big one hit him, and they found him frozen stiff with his hand frozen to his pecker in his tree stand. And then people said at that point that the thing had gone nuclear, you know, and there was nothing. And so as, as of now, oh, I also, before that, I had Lucas Davenport walk out to a crime scene. And all the cops were Yeah, but that's all right. That's just a standard, you know. The cops were remarking that now the dress code at the BCA had gone from Sears to, you know, like Neiman Marcus or something like that. But at any rate, so that's where it stands. I mean, um, and I don't know what he plans in the future here. He did do me the favor of having his character reading one of my books in one of his books so that yeah but he didn't like it <laughs> i don't but wait a minute he didn't say that it wasn't in there he didn't uh, all right this gives me ammunition i'm starting on a book i'll have to figure out it. no i'm going to wait for him to it's his turn because i you know it was tip for tip. that's the protocol yeah so that's that's where it stands now the history of the 
the sniping back and forth. 